Welcome back, MTG Joe here with another Zendikar Rising deck tech. Uh, the new standard set is coming out on the 17th on Arena, and I'll be participating in the early streamer event on the 16th. Uh, so make sure to stop by, we'll be playing this deck amongst a number of uh, cool brews that day against a bunch of content creators. Um, so I've already posted two decks, uh, the blue-white mill and the black, uh, black-blue black rogues. Um, we'll try to get through as many of these video deck techs as possible, but if you want to see this list as well as others, uh, just swing over to my Aether Hub. I've posted a bunch of lists on there, um, so you can just check them out, download them if you'd like, and try them out. Um, the format for early streamer is best of one, so this is how these decks will be crafted. Uh, they're all early kind of test decks, so they're not intended to be tier one necessarily, but it's to try out some of the new mechanics and cards and see what works, what doesn't, and just have some fun at the early streamer event. Um, so moving into this one here, this is a Golgari counters deck, so green-black counters, like plus one-one counters. Um, so we got a number of tools in the new set specifically for counters. So let's dive into it. So we have Grakma Skyclave Ravager. It's a three-mana uh, creature, one black-green. Enters the battlefield with three one-one counters on it. And then, so at the base, it's a three-mana three-three. Uh, whenever another creature you control dies, if it had a 1-1 counter on it, put a 1-1 counter on Grakma. And then when it di when Grakma dies, you get an XX uh, Hydra, where X is the number of counters on it. So it's pretty good. At the very least, you have a 3-mana creature that leaves behind a 3-mana creature, or a 3-power creature, which is uh, pretty good overall. And the way we're going to try to do is abuse it with having a lot of different ways to have counters in the deck. Um... We have Orin Reef Ooze, uh, so we're playing three of these as well. So this is a three mana, two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you put a one, one counter on target creature you control. So it can put it on itself as well. And then whenever it attacks, you put a one, one counter on each attacking creature with one, one counters. So it's kind of like an anthem effect for your creatures with uh, counters on it. Um, I want to test this one out. I don't know if we want four. Um, we're a little bit heavy on the three drop slot, so that's why I trimmed some of the numbers. Uh, to go from there. Uh, we have returning Theros Escape God or Escape Zombie Hydra, Pelucranos Enchained. So it's a four mana six six and then if you escape it, it comes back with twelve one one counters. And if you can basically have it fight your opponent and when it's dealt damage you remove that many one one counters. Um, so this is another way to uh, get counters on your creatures and then it's also removal on a creature. Uh, we have another new card, Swarm Shambler. So this is a 1 mana, uh, enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Whenever a creature you control with a 1-1 one, one counter becomes the target of a spell or ability, or just a start, just the target of a spell, opponent controls, you create a 1-1 one, one insect, and then for 1 mana you can put counters on it uh, by tapping it. So this is another way to kind of get value out of your creatures dying. Uh, say you have this out, and then this out, this gets killed, while well, you get... Um, a counter on this and then you get a, a token as well so there's kind of some synergies with that so moving on uh, we have pride malkin uh, so somehow this little three mana cat uh, gives our creatures with one one counters trample um, so this is relevant we have can get a lot of big creatures so we want ways so that they can't be chump blocked pride malkin also puts a counter on a target creature so it's another way to kind of add value to that um, so we have a couple scavenging ooze uh, I'm not sure how graveyard intensive the format will be. If we see a lot of mill or rogues or even just Uro decks, we might want to go up on the number of scavenging uses. But it's just another way to uh, get counters on a creature and it scales well late game as well. Uh, and then finally we have Stone Coil Serpent. Uh, basically counter is equal to X, pro multicolor, and then Wildwood Scourge, uh, one in X. Um, enters the battlefield with XS, X11 counters. So both these creatures are really good because if you draw them early, you could play them. If you draw them late, then you just pump a bunch of mana into them. Um, and then whenever one or more 1-1 uh, counters be put on non-Hydra creatures you control, put a 1-1 counter on Wild, Wild, Wildwood Scourge. So of note, we do have some uh, Hydras. We have two up here. Um, so everything else, we're pretty much okay with the counters. But it basically is just a free way to get counters on it as well. Uh, moving on uh, to kind of our spells, uh, we have the Ozolith. So uh, something I wanted to try out in this deck. 
um, just kind of take advantage of all the counters coming on and off creatures. So whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, fed counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. Uh, and then at the beginning of your combat, uh, you can move all the counters onto target creature. So if you have something like Pelucranos with six get uh, killed somehow. You put six counters on Ozolith, and then you can put those counters on like one of your other creatures, and then kind of go from there. Uh, Agadine's Awakening is the new flip land for Mythic, so you can either have the choice of it being played for one, uh, black mana and pay three life for it to come in untapped, or you can play it for its spell side, which is triple black and X, and you can return from your graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creatures that each have different converted mana costs of X or less. Um, so this is kind of a late game, reanimate a bunch of things, and then kind of go to town like that. Um, we're playing two eliminates as a room removal, and something I want to try out was Inscription of Abundance. So this is a two mana spell with Kicker. So Kicker is a returning mechanic. You can pay the Kicker cost in addition to the spell cost to get added value. Um, so if you just pay two mana, at instant speed, you can either put two 1-1 one, one counters on target creature, so it could be like a combat trick or push through damage. Uh, you could gain X life, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Or you can have a creature fight. So it's kind of removal, pump, and life gain if needed. If you pay the kicker, you get to do all three of those effects. So I think in the shell it can be something useful, and it might be something we want to play more of instead of eliminate once we actually get into the games. Finally, we have the Great Henge. Um, we're going to be making creatures with that care about counters, and so we can cheat out the Great Henge earlier, uh, and then it helps us ramp, gains us life, and then draws us cards and puts more counters on our creatures. So it's a good all-around kind of engine for the deck. I uh, also want to try out the new Nisa, Nisa of Shadowed Bogues. Bergs, if you know how to pronounce that word, let me know. Uh, this is a four-mana Nisa, um, which has the Landfall ability. So Landfall is another re returning mechanic. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, it triggers an ability. In the case of Nisa, whenever a land enters the battlefield, we get to put an additional loyalty counter on her. Um, so her plus is similar to older Nisas, not Nisa Shakes the World, thankfully. Um, so you untap a land you control, you have it become a 3-3 elemental with haste and menace this time, not vigilance. It's still a land. Uh, and notably, this is till end of turn. It's not till your opponent's next turn. It's not forever. You're not going to be staring down a bunch of Vigilance Nisa lands like with Shakes the World. She's not going to double your mana. Um, but the what ability I'm more interested in is um, you may put a creature card with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of lands you control into the battlefield from your hand or graveyard with two 1-1 counters on it. So it's kind of really just can reanimate our stuff. It can give counters. It's a way to kind of cheat in creatures. So overall, it's a good like uh, green-black shell for a planeswalker. I'm actually really excited to test this one out. Um, land base wise we're trying we're playing two of the castles, black castle for card draw, uh, green castle for kind of ramp. Um, we have a, a couple of X spells and stone coil and the other hydra so we can pump mana into those late game. And then we have I have to update these numbers but the swamps and the forest should be a little bit higher. Um, and then we have four trinomes and three temple of maladies. I think it's six and six for the swamps. Uh, the deck list will be in the video um, video description on YouTube. Uh, I just forgot to edit, update those. Um, so that's pretty much it. The reason I'm going with the trinomes more than the temple of maladies is because they have the basic land types. They will allow our castles to come into play untapped where temple of malady won't. Um, so that's something there that we want to consider as well. Um, we could probably play some Fabled Passages if needed. We're not really getting a huge amount of value, but we do have Nisa and Pelucranos that can escape, so it might be something we want to try out there. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, the one thing people had asked when I posted this on Instagram was, why no white? Uh, Conclave Mentor gets extra counters. Uh, I think right now in current standard, the mana base is really bad for three color decks that are trying to be more aggressive. You don't want to be playing a bunch of trinomes and temples to kind of get your spells cast on time. Um, they're going to be coming to play tapped. If you're playing Conclave Mentor on three and then your uh, three drop on four, you're kind of slow in that regard. Um, also, the Pathway Lands, although they fix mana the color uh, for the color of that turn, they only produce one color when they come in. So if you have a green-white Pathway Land, 
it only fixes your mana the turn you play it. But if you need to go like uh, green white into green black and you only have those two lands and you choose your pathway to be white instead of another color, it doesn't really help in that case there. So for now I want to just try going with standard green black. Um, there is probably an option to go green white as well um, to play with some of the effects there. There's the enchantment for landfall that creates tutus that's really good. Um, but I think we got to be a little bit more cautious with our mana bases compared to what we were doing in Ravnica base standard where you have the shock lines that really help smooth out the draws. Um, but we'll definitely try at, once we get a better feel for the pathway lands as to how well we can stretch the mana base. Um, so this is pretty much the deck. Let me know what you think, any suggestions, um, if you like what's included, if you make changes, uh, if there's any decks you'd like to see in addition, um, do let me know. And hopefully I'll be able to catch you during the early streamer event next Wednesday. I'll be on, uh, so it's the 16th, I'll be on from about 1 p.m. Eastern to about 9, 10 p.m. at night. Um, so hope to catch you. Have a great one. Stay safe out there. And thanks for watching.